Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 36. Welcome back to another episode. Um, hello to all my new subscribers. Uh, there's been a lot of you this week, <laughs> which has been great. So hi, hello and welcome. Um, I'm here to talk to you about cross stitch and quilting and crafting and whatever else I get up to in a week, which was again a lot this week. So <laughs> yeah, um, I think I'm going to start with some questions though, because I um, since I kind of showed that um, it wasn't a how-to, it was just kind of like how I finished that frame last week. I got a lot of questions about that, so I wanna answer those first. Um, I got several questions about the paint colors that I used. So these are from Hobby Lobby, and I said they were 250, they're only $2. Um, so these are the paints. They're the Folk Art Home Decor brand and the chalk paint style. And so let's see, this color is sage and this is Parisian gray. So yeah, um, I used pretty half and half mix, I think, of um, these two colors. You can kind of see the difference of the colors down there. And yeah, that's what I used to paint my frame to match that Aged Pewter, I think, is the um, Gentle Arts thread that I was trying to match. So that's what I used for paint. And then I got some questions about what the wax, like the like how did I antique the, um, the frame after I painted it. And so I used, from Home Depot, this is Bear Brand Wax um, Decorative Finish. And I used Dark Antique. So I had bought this for a furniture project um, and then ended up going, I think, with just a clear or a white wax rather than a dark one. So I just had this whole, you know, big old thing um, sitting in my garage. And so that's what I have been using anytime I'm antiquing a frame. So yeah, hope that helps you guys. For those of you that want to um, recreate my frame, which is so exciting because a couple people were like, I'm buying this chart. I'm buying that frame and I'm doing the same thing. Um, if you do that, please tag me on Instagram or send me an email with a picture when you're done because I'd love to see it. So yay. Um, one other thing that I got a lot of questions about this week on uh, my last video and then also on my framing video was about the use of glass with uh, frames. And so I wanted to cover, I don't know, just some tips and some I don't know, some of my experience with using different uh, glass, like with the store-bought frame and without. So as just a rule for myself, anytime I buy a store-bought frame, I don't use the glass that came with it because I find it super reflective and I don't like that I can't clearly see my stitching through that glass, like at any point, you know, like it's just depending on the angle, you know, you might have a lot of reflection. And so I just don't use the glass that comes with store-bought frames because it's always, you know, super shiny and reflective. Um, I have had glass custom cut for a store-bought frame and it's like, depending on the glass, like, I don't know, between 15 and $30. So you, that's definitely an option that you can do. Some people just prefer framing without glass. I know Carol Saltbox Stitcher has shown a bunch of her frame pieces and she always mentions that she doesn't use glass in them. And I know a lot of people um, feel the same way and I really don't mind not using glass. If I'm buying a custom sized frame that somebody is building for me like Michael's or someplace online and they offer a really nice museum glass option, then I usually will pick it because um, you can see straight through it, there's no issues, uh, and it does keep the front of your piece completely sealed off. So yeah, if it's you know available to me, I love it. But if it's not, then I'd rather just use no glass than, um, than use the super reflective glass that comes with store-bought frames. The other thing to keep in mind with glass is that you shouldn't put it directly on top of your stitching. So that's why people frame with mats 
and or spacers if you don't want to use a mat and that just helps lift the glass up off your stitching that way I think the framer my custom framer um explained it to me as like like if moisture gets in and tr it's like trapped between the glass and the stitching and has nowhere to go like there's no airflow um it can cause like deterioration and stuff and like fog up the glass so uh I think that's the basics I don't know somebody can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments but that's what I heard from my framer about why you want to make sure there's a barrier between your stitching um and the glass so yeah those are my answers to questions about glass so <laughs> hope that's helpful if y'all have any more questions feel free to leave them in the comments like always Okay, so I do have some quilting finishes to show you this week. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen a little sneak peek in my Instagram stories and I posted one little picture um, on my actual feed, but I'm going to save that for later in the video and I'm going to go ahead and start out with cross stitch, which is an update on my March Madness that has finished up and, you know, a new start. <laughs> and some other things I've been getting into. So let me show you what I've been stitching on. Okay, so the last time we talked, I um, my March Madness was just going into the final two. And so I had my final two projects that I was gonna be working on and putting up for a vote. I think the vote went up on Monday last week and we picked our winner. So let me show you the two finalists one more time. Ink Circles After the Roses. And I'm stitching this one on 40 count Maritime White by Lakeside Linen. And I am using all of the called for flosses and they are just beautiful. And so that is the progress I have made on After the Roses. And I was gonna do a big dramatic reveal of which one won, but as soon as I show you this next one, you're gonna know that it won. <laughs> because this is where progress stopped with After the Roses. So unfortunately, um, After the Roses was not our winner, but that's okay because I think I could finish this next one. So let me show you what won. Okay, so the winner of my March Madness was the Meow Block Party. <laughs> I, I have had such a turnaround on this project. If you remember from either of my whip parades, this was one of my very oldest whips and I talked about how much I hated the fabric and the two over two and well I mean it's not even the two over two I stitched two over two plenty even though my preference is one thread it was it's really just the fabric and um I've gotten past it it's still not my favorite I'm not just gonna like stitch on witch for fun but I've gotten past it I figured out how to stitch on it and I've made a lot of progress <laughs> and I'm having so much fun stitching this so much fun that I want more of these patterns. Oh my gosh. So I stitched the whole band that goes around the block and I started working on the back stitch line, which goes all the way around so that you use that to help assemble your block. Oh, I'll just do a little scroll by. They're so cute. I love them. And so that's not all. I stitched all of that. And then I got back to work on the top. So here's where I'm at on the top. I've got two of the, cat, the cats completely done, two of the mice completely done. And I started working on this guy. And then I just need to fill in that one. And then there's a big diamond of Smyrna crosses that goes in the center. And I love it. So that was my March Madness winner. Thank you all for participating. Um, those of you who uh, went over on Instagram and helped vote, thank you so much. Um, I had a great time with it. And I really think I'm probably gonna have this done in maybe the next week or so. We'll see my next video, we'll film. It won't be the end of March yet, there'll only be a couple days. So I should probably make this a goal for this week. But um, yeah, so I'm excited about finishing this one up. So yay, yay for March Madness, which also for the first time ever, I am doing an actual like March Madness, the basketball March Madness bracket, um, 
with a group at work. And when I say a group, I mean 60 people <laughs> um, are like, another question I get a lot is what I do for a living, um, which is so boring. So I'm like, <laughs> but anyways, I work for a large company. Um, I am in a finance department and I work on projects, special projects. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so our finance group, one of the like higher up managers sent it out to like everyone who basically reports up to our VP. And so 60 of us are doing a March Madness uh, bracket challenge and I'm in like second place right now. <laughs> Except that I picked UT Texas to make it to the final and they lost their first round game last night. So I'm pretty sure my bracket is just completely busted. Um, but that's okay. It's fun. It's been I haven't been watching any of the games, but I have been refreshing throughout the day to see who's winning. So I know if my bracket's doing good. <laughs> so I'm doing real March Madness too. <laughs> Okay, so what else did I work on this week? I had a new start last night, yesterday afternoon. <laughs> yesterday afternoon, I decided to join in with um, Kathleen Situation Normal and Merrick Crawford. Um, so just because on Instagram, um, I decided to join in their hashtag strawberry pickin 21 Sal. I'll put that on the screen. <laughs> And um, yeah, I I started my strawberry picking project, which is one I've wanted to do forever. <laughs> and it is strawberry fields forever. So um, this is by Blackbird Designs. And if you've been with uh, watching me for a while, you might remember that I did start a color conversion for the bricks and and whatever this is. Side story, yesterday, was it yesterday or, I don't remember, last night or a Friday night, Kathleen and I um, were texting and we were talking about the color conversion. And I was like, oh, here are my colors if you want to use them, you know. Um, and we were, she asked me what this was, but I misunderstood and thought she meant what colors. And I was like, oh, the same colors from here. And she's like, no, but what is it? We were exchanging like voice text, just like cackling because like neither of us could figure out what this is. I said maybe a planter, um, psychedelic hill. I don't know. Anybody, anybody actually know what this big chevron, um, a vase, a planter? I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, Kathleen, you're a treasure and... <laughs> I was laughing so hard at our conversation last night. Um, anyways, so I started this <laughs> and I love it. And I don't care what this is, it's getting stitched. <laughs> so here is my little small start on that. And you can see I started at the bottom because I wanted to start with my color conversion and make sure it played nicely with some of the other colors. So I've just put in some of the bricks, a little bit of a little mossy hill and the fence and the side of the house and got my first few strawberries, my first two strawberries in. So yeah, um, I am stitching this one on the called for 32 count Confederate gray by weeks. And I'm using the called for colors except for the grays. I have switched those out and I will, um, <clears throat> I will put my color conversion in the description box. So if anyone else is interested, I just, wanted some sandier kind of creamier colors brown colors rather than the grays um I don't know it's just my preference I just to me the gray popped off um the chart a little too much at me and I would rather showcase all the reds and pinks and so I just wanted to pick a little bit lighter of a brick conversion so if for some reason I don't like it I may go back and change it, but um, so far I think it's gonna be nice. I wanna get some more of the reds and pinks in before I fully decide. Um, but yeah, so that is what I'm going with. And that is my Strawberry Fields Forever start. I also worked on my hip hop uh, chalk full. And I was gonna try and get it done this week, but then I started that Strawberry Sal and I worked on another one that I'm going to show you in a minute. So this did not get completed, but it is very close. And here's where I'm at. I've got all the bunnies in and I just need to finish up the back stitching, 
Um, there's a few more little pink flowers and I need to finish filling in the jar and these two little carrots, but it's really close. Honestly, it's just one more day of stitching, maybe like four or five hours, just cause I say four or five hours, just because it's so much fill in. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so cute. And I definitely want to have this done by next week so I can FFO it and put it up. I am stitching this one on 32 count slate um, with all of the called for colors. And um, if you're ever wondering about, 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 <laughs> if you're ever wondering about uh, what I'm using to stitch my pieces with, I always list the pattern and the fabric and the floss um, that I'm using down in my description box. So please just click the little arrow and go check there. And if for some reason I haven't listed something, ask away. But um, I do put all of that in the description box because I am known to just hold up some cross stitch and move on and forget to tell you what I'm working with. So that's hip hop. The other thing that I stitched on this week and I gave it a couple of days um, was Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs. And it felt really good to get this one back out. I don't think I've worked on this in like a month. Um, you know, March Madness had a prescribed schedule to it and I didn't include any samplers because I wanted projects that could be reasonably finished. Um, so I was really excited to pull a sampler out this week and I worked on this one. Oh, it's so pretty. I love looking at this one. This is on the called for 36 count legacy by Pictureless Plus with all of the called for floss and I worked on finishing off that house, although I still have a few window panes, and putting in um, the little plant and some more letters across that band and started outlining the bird. So yeah, I think I'm probably at the halfway point by now. So that feels really good. I still have to decide what I'm gonna do above the house for the over one stitching. Um, the, this pattern is a wedding sampler and it says, oh joyous day, initials, and then there's like a date. So I haven't decided if I'm going to stitch this for someone else's wedding anniversary or I was, is this too cheesy? I was kind of thinking, oh joyous day, and then my name, Elizabeth Ann, and then my birthday, June 11. <laughs> that was a joyous day, right? I was born. <laughs> and if you ask my dad, he will say I was the prettiest baby ever born at St. Mary's. Is it St. Mary's? I don't remember what hospital I was born at in Port Arthur, Texas. <laughs> he says the nuns opened a record book and everything. <laughs> I think it's just because I had hair. So I looked, you know, a little bit prettier than maybe some of the bald screaming babies. <laughs> I had super dark hair and a lot of it. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh. That's a joyous day, and I feel like this is definitely the next sampler I want to get finished, but it's still a ways away um, because I keep getting interrupted by all the other things I want to work on. <laughs> okay, how about we get into finishes? <laughs> I actually have one sitting here from my mom. She dropped off a quilt for me to quilt um, yesterday, and she also included a finished cross stitch piece. So I'm just going to share it with you guys. My mom finished my Christmas list by Silver Creek Samplers. Isn't this so cute? She did such a good job on this. <laughs> so this is on a 16 count Ada, um, hand dyed. I think it's probably a picture this plus, but I'm not entirely sure. It's a super soft Ada. Um, I told her I would try and figure out what it is because she wants more of it. Um, she stitches on uh, like even weave and linen and like 28 and 32, but um, I think she really enjoyed this like softer Ada. So I need to figure out where, what this is so I can get her some more. Um, but yeah, so she did the My Christmas List by Silver Creek Samplers on 16 count Ada with all of the called for DMC colors. And it is beautiful. My favorite is this little bed quilt right here. Oh, how do I get it to stay where I want it to? And this little angel. Oh my gosh, it's so stunning. This is so pretty. So 
I'm going to finish this for her. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann's finishing service is open for one person. <laughs> and that's my mom. <laughs> Um, and so I'm not sure if I'm going to frame it or turn it into like a little quilted wall hanging like I did with my Christmas rules from Lizzie Kate. Um, yeah. So anyways, I haven't decided yet, but I will show you guys once I fully finish it. And I thought you just might enjoy seeing it stitched. So that was, um, something my mom has been stitching on the past few weeks. Okay, so let's get into quilts for a minute. I have done some quilty things this week and I want to share them with you. First up, I did make another 12 inch block for my Americana sampler quilt this week. And here it is. I love this one. I am such a sucker for a sawtooth star pattern. And um, I love it. So cool. I can't remember the name of the block, so I'll put it on the screen for you. It's another Blockheads 3 um, quilt block. So yeah, still chugging away on my Americana sampler quilt. Okay, so the next thing I want to share with you is a fully finished quilt. <laughs> um, if you're on Instagram, follow me because I like to share kind of day to day what I'm up to. And so yesterday I shared a bunch of clips from my long arm quilter. Um, well, how do I phrase that? From me long arm quilting the quilt I'm about to show you. Um, I rent time. So if you're in the Austin area, over the top quilting is where I go rent long arm quilting time from. They will also quilt your quilt themselves. Um, but I took a class from them so that I can long arm my quilts myself, which saves me money and means that I can do them, like assuming there's an appointment available, I can do them right then, quilt them and have them. And I don't have like, you know, one to two month turnaround from sending something out. Um, and it's a cheaper, uh, you know, it's cheaper for me to do it myself rather than pay them to do it. So that's what I do. I highly encourage if you make a lot of quilts and you like the long arm look, but you know, you're looking to save a little bit of money because I mean, quilting is awesome and definitely quilting at home, um, on your home machine is a great option. I have never been good at that. So I have rented time from people who own long arm machines since probably 2007. So I've been long arm quilting a long time on various different machines, whoever would rent me some time. <laughs> um, and now uh, we have like a specialty long arm quilting studio right here in Cedar Park. So anyways, let me just show you the quilt. But if you're interested in long arm quilting, definitely Google in your city um, who rents time on long arm machines if you wanna try it out, cause it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I like it. It's instant gratification. You just get to make your quilt a quilt. So I quilted this. <laughs> this is my I Heart You quilt that I showed you um, a few videos ago that I had completed. And I quilted it. I did a um, sideways kind of Baptist fan quilt pattern on it. And I bound it with this curry by Kona, um, just kind of mustardy yellow solid. And the backing is like my absolute favorite. These little red hearts, they look so cute with this. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so I did take a video of the whole quilt so I can stop awkwardly trying to show you the whole thing. Um, yeah, I, I love, 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 love. <laughs> I'm so giddy with excitement over this quilt. Can you even hear me through this quilt? I love it. And um, I'm working on adding a quilt hanger to one of my hallway walls. My house has a really long hallway um, through the center of it. It's kind of a closed off floor plan at the front of the house and then the back like kind of opens up into the kitchen dining living room but so anyways we have like a long hallway through the center of our house and on one of those big long walls this quilt is gonna get hung up and then probably changed out seasonally as I have other seasonally appropriate quilts but hearts are um seasonal agnostic to me <laughs> and I love them so they're gonna go on the wall or forever until I have another quilt I want to hang up. Um, yeah, I love how this turned out. So I was really, really excited to share it with you all. 
uh, I did use um, a pattern. It's the I Heart You quilt by Then Came June and Pen and Paper Patterns. I'll link the pattern below. And I used the called for red and pink Kona. And then I picked a blue kind of speckle for my um, background fabric. And I think this is Kona Snow for the white and Kona Curry for the binding, which I love. And I did machine sew on my binding. And I don't know, what else can I say? I just wanna keep holding it up. The hearts, the hearts. I love them. <laughs> All right, that was the quilt I made. <laughs> okay, and I have one more quilty and cross stitchy FFO to show you. So you might remember this pillow that I showed you guys, I don't know, a long time ago, around Christmas. And I stitched this a couple of years ago and it's the Lizzie Kate Christmas ABCs. And it was a kit that was out of print for a while and hard to find, but now 123 Stitch has released it just as a chart instead of a kit. And um, my mom decided to stitch her own version. So this is mine. I stitched it on 28 Count Monaco um, and just did a little, uh, uh, what do they call it, envelope style? I don't know. Um, slide in style, pillow sham style with some trim. And this is a 12 by 16 travel pillow insert. And it, it just worked out perfect for um, my cross stitch. So my mom stitched it and um, I thought she was doing it on 28, but it turned out to be smaller. So it's 32 count. And I wanted to add some fabric around it and make it like a little quilt top and add binding as the trim. So ah, here's what I came up with and it's so stinking cute. And I took a video of me um, making this. So I hope it's not too long. I haven't edited it yet, but I'm gonna insert it here in the video. So um, if you kind of want to watch me put this together, um, I'm gonna insert that video right here. Okay, hi friends. Um, I am sitting down today because I want to finish this um, Lizzie Kate ABC Christmas that my mom stitched. And um, just for reference, this was my finish of it, um, stitched on the 28 Count Monaco that I dyed to this color, kind of a minty blue green. And um, I finished just as like an envelope style pillow with trim. And so my mom stitched hers on a 28 Count Gingerbread Picture This Plus Linen. So it's the same stitch size, but um, she left uh, a pretty small margin because she's a little bit worried. I think, I thought I'd helped her measure it. I think we just overcompensated. We didn't, and she didn't start in the center. She started up here. So I can't do the exact same finish because I don't have um, a large enough margin on all, on basically on the top and the right. And so I'm gonna add some fabric to it and possibly do like a bound, like a quilt binding edge instead of a trim. Um, so that's what I'm sitting down to do. I've got this huge stack of Christmas fabrics and my new, um, Lori Holt red fabrics. And I just had Diego interrupting me and now Ginger <laughs> sitting on the chair on the other side of the table. So I'm sure she's going to jump up here at some point. So join me in the cats while I make a pillow. Oh man. Okay. So this must be a 32 count because my finished stitching is 12 and a half inches wide and my mom's is only like 11. So, okay, so this is a 32 count. So that's why hers came out smaller. Yeah, so I'm definitely gonna be adding um, fabric strips to the side and then I'll probably do still do the binding on the edges. So, okay, that makes more sense. I was wondering why hers did not take up more of this fabric and I think it's because I thought this was a 28 count and it is 32. So sorry mom, that was my fault. <laughs> Okay, so I think I've decided that this is gonna be the backing. I have a ton of it and the reds um, I think look really good. So I think this is gonna end up being the backing fabric for my pillow. 
Um, and I want to do uh, sashing basically around the cross stitch and then a binding. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna sash and what I'm gonna bind with. when you buy pillows and the tag is as big as the pillow. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think my first step is gonna be to interface this. I'm gonna try and iron it really nice and flat and square and kind of block it almost with a little bit of steam. Not too much because this is over dyed. Um, over dyed flosses and over dyed fabric. So I'm gonna be light with that and get some interfacing attached to it. Um, yeah, and then I'll come back and show you what we're gonna do. So I took it to the ironing board and ironed it and tried to kind of straighten it up and put a piece of um, just really thin, lightweight, fusible interfacing to kind of help keep it um, square while I work with it and while I sew with it. So yeah, let me, see how much of a margin I can get and cut the same margin on all sides and then from there I'll measure and cut um, my sashing and binding and backing and all that. Okay so really I need about an inch and a half on each side. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut two and a half inch strips of my sashing to go on all sides. That way later, if I decide I wanna quilt the top of this, I have some extra fabric and then I'll trim it down to the exact you know, 12 by 16 that I need later. Um, but to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some two and a half strips. Strips? <laughs> uh, strips and yeah. I've got my sashing strips cut out. Um, my piece ended up being nine and a half by 13 and a quarter. So the top and bottom are 13 and a quarter. And then these, I think I made 14. So once this is sewed, these will be the right size. And yeah, I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew these two pieces on first, then press, and then these two pieces on and press. And then I'll be back to show you what we're doing next. All right, so I got my strips sewn on to um, onto my cross stitch. So this is what the front of the pillow is gonna look like. And eventually we'll add some binding and a backing. So I'm gonna work on getting the rest of that stuff um, cut out. Instead of doing a folded back like I did on my pillow, I am going to use a zipper on this one. So how I'm gonna do that, um, and I have already cut this piece um, just to the size of the backing, so it'll get trimmed down, it's a little bit too big. Um, I'll trim it later though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first sew these two together and then, basically inside the seam, I will sew the zipper. And that way, when I seam rip and push it open, 
um, the zipper will have a little covered flap. So it'll end up being, you know, a little bit of a hidden zipper. Um, I'll show you what that looks like when I get done. But basically the steps are to sew your pieces of fabric together with a basting stitch, like a long basting stitch, and then um, press open and lay your zipper in that seam and sew it in. So that way um, you have those nice little uh, flaps over your zipper to kind of hide it. And this zipper is only 14 inches and the back of the pillow needs to be 16. So that's gonna give me um, about an inch, inch and a half on either side, uh, depending on the finish size once I have the binding and everything. But I think that's still gonna be plenty big to get my pillow insert um, into the pillow. So yeah, that's the zipper plan. So I'm gonna get the back sewn together and well actually okay before I do that I'll finish cutting the rest of my fabric. Okay so I'm gonna bring you over to my um, ironing board because I've cut everything out that I need. So I am going to work on putting the back of the pillow together um, and inserting the zipper and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay so I've sewed my uh, two pieces of fabric where the zipper is going to go and I sewed it using a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to press this open. decided to just quilt the outer border. Um, I don't know if I need one more line or not. I need to trim this down and figure out where my binding is going to go. And um, yeah, so here's the back of it, <laughs> which we hid in inside the pillow. But there is the front of my pillow so far. Okay, so I have my cross stitch piece quilted can see I just quilted the borders. Um, I didn't actually quilt inside the linen. And then I am going to lay this on top of this. And so the front and the back of my pillow are gonna get bound using this binding. And so I made this binding from a fat quarter and it's just a two and a half inch strip folded in half. And the way I do my binding is to sew um, on the back side and then fold it around to the front and top stitch down from the front. So this binding is what is going to secure all four edges of my pillow. And then we'll be able to get our pillow form in through the little zipper pocket that we created. So yeah, let me work on um, getting the binding on and then I'll be back to show you what it looks like. Okay, so I have the binding sewn on to the back, which it will then get folded around to the front and top stitched down. And that'll be our little trim. Um, it's looking super cute. I am gonna test the fit of the pillow form before I finish the binding. Okay. <laughs> So that's how I put together this little quilty pillow with the binding for the edge um, and then the back with my little semi hidden zipper that, oop, <laughs> that you can use to get the pillow in and out. Um, 
yeah I just absolutely love how this turned out I already sent pictures to my mom she loves it so this is gonna be so cute as a little decoration oh also I have to share the funniest cutest story my nephew Charlie is five and he is like basically 15 um he's way too smart way too tall <laughs> he's like a little teenager and when I was texting my mom pictures of um, updates of what I was doing to her cross stitch, she, uh, Charlie was at her house. And so she was showing Charlie, he always like, what are, what are you looking at? What are you seeing? I want to see the picture. And so he was like, oh, is that a pillow I can lay my head on? <laughs> and my mom was like, no, it's not. And he goes, it's decorative. And he goes, oh, so it's like a stuffed picture. <laughs> He's a genius. Yes, it's a stuffed picture. <laughs> so. This is the stuffed picture I made for my mom. Okay, so that is all of the things that I worked on this week, which was a lot. <laughs> I keep thinking, I'm like, oh, what am I even gonna have to show next week? Because I did so much this week and then somehow I work on more. So <laughs> hopefully that'll be the case for next week. We'll find out. Um, so let's talk about haul. I just had one package come in this week from Fat Quarter Shop and I, um, I ordered the new Lori Holt pattern, Stitchy Stars, and I just love this. And I totally want this for in my craft room, like in my quilty, cross-stitchy craft room. This is so stinking cute. I think she did hers on a 25 count oatmeal Lugana. Um, it's real small, so I won't do this probably on a 36 or 40. I'll probably do it on something in the 28 to 32 range. Um, yeah, and they're very full coverage, but they're so little that I don't think it'll be too time consuming to stitch. 30 by 204. So I'm gonna guess, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna guess these are each probably like 28 by 28 or something like that. Um, 27 by 27. So anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that. And I got the Weeks Dye Works thread pack that she used. And those colors are gorgeous. It's Turkish red, peony, capri, navy, and whitewash. Lovely. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to stitch this one. If anyone else has this chart and wants to stitch along with me, let me know because it's so springy in summer. I don't know. Should I? I'll probably start it soon. I don't know. <laughs> And then also from Fat Quarter Shop, I got some fabrics. And the first one I got was this kind of like bunting. I guess I'm holding it upside down. This kind of like patriotic bunting because I don't really have a lot of like straight up patriotic. Like I have red, white, and blue fabric, but I don't have like, you know, really like specifically patriotic fabric. And I felt like this would be really cute for a finishing fabric. And then these two fabrics I got are both from Laundry Basket Quilt's Secret Stash. And I shared on Instagram last week that I bought a fat quarter bundle of these to make a king size quilt with that I am very excited about. But before I decided on that fat quarter bundle, I did just buy a couple half yard pieces of some of my favorites, which I just love this sweet little print with red. <laughs> and then this kind of rusty red, um, with the triangles. I just love this. I love a stripe and this kind of like unusual stripe of triangles. Um, love. So yeah, this is from Fat Quarter Shop and it is Laundry Basket Quilts and it's called Country Road is the actual print is Country Road. So yeah, that was my haul. So should we do giveaways? Thank you guys all so much for um, for entering this giveaway last week. I had a record number of comments. Uh, I'm really glad that I picked out some charts that you guys were all interested in stitching. And big thank you to Carla from Cobweb's Corner for sponsoring the giveaway. And I think we might have another one coming soon. So that's exciting. Um, so yeah, so let me see. First up was Liberty Inn by Plum Street Samplers. And there were 360 entries for Liberty Inn. And the winner was Sue Fallow. So Sue, send me an email and I'll get you uh, your chart. Next up was Hip Hop Chalkful 
that I'm working on right now. And um, the winner of this one is Julie Sutton. Julie Sutton. Next was Bloom uh, Chockful by Hands on Design. And the winner of this was Elizabeth Simmers. Elizabeth Simmers. Next up was Beware, which Rob asked me. He's like, did you plan that? Like, Beware the Ides of March? And I was like, I did not. <laughs> I just picked a Halloween chart for the middle of March, and it's called Beware of Cat. <laughs> so anyways, that was kind of a fun um, thing to just see Beware in all the comments. <laughs> so anyways, Beware. It went to Vicky Treadway. Hi, Vicky. I recognize your name. <laughs> so, Vicky, you won Beware. Okay, so I don't normally do a plans section in my videos, but I had some fun things to tell you about, and they are going to contribute to some plans over the upcoming months. So, um, very, very excitingly, two people in my life are pregnant with new babies. And one of those is my very, very best work friend, KP. And she's the one I talked to Cross Stitch a while back at the start of the pandemic. And she made an amazing, um, uh, oh, what is it called? Why am I forgetting? David Rose. Shit's Creek. <laughs> Shit's Creek. She did a great uh, Shit's Creek pattern. Anyways, she is having her first baby and it's a little girl and I am very excited. I think she's due in August. So I have a baby girl quilt that I need to start planning and thinking about because I'm totally making her a little baby girl quilt. And then my sister, Allison, my sister who lives just a few houses down from me, she is pregnant with her third baby. Oh my God. And guys, She's having another boy. <laughs> so my beloved little Charlie and Andy, who you've seen here on my videos with me before, um, they're five and three. Um, they're getting a new little baby brother in September. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, we Andy has already named him Rocco and I'm fully on board. Um, other ideas, Teddy, please, Allison, listen, I'm just, we just need to name your baby for you because it's gonna be cute. No, Allison picks out great names. But um, anyways, I'm just so excited. So I've got a little baby boy quilt that I need to have at the top of my mind to be thinking about right now and a little baby girl quilt. I can't wait to share those with you guys once I eventually make them. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's going to be upcoming. Um, cross stitch wise, I don't know. No plans right now. I have them, some things that I want to get finished. I have some things I want to start. I think I was doing so well at the beginning of the year, not really starting anything and finishing a few things. Um, March Madness, put a pause on that because I was focused on so many older whips, but that's been fun. So it doesn't matter. I don't know. Sometimes I get down on myself and I'm like, oh, you're not finishing things, but who cares? I finished plenty. It's just not always what I intended to. It's just whatever pops into my brain and I'm like, that would be fun. Let's do it. So Anyways, um, thank you guys all so much for joining me this week. Uh, I hope this video wasn't too long. I have no idea how long that video of um, me putting together the pillow was. We'll find out in editing. <laughs> uh, anyways, I hope you all have a great week and I'll be back next week to share even more. Bye.